Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we will learn to get tracking data into a video file with After Effects via Camera Tracker, an After Effects plugin made by the Foundry. We will learn to import this track video to Infinity Set in order to insert 3D objects within it as well. Very well. The first thing we need to do, we need to do is import a video file in After Effects. I will take this one and then I will create a composition. Okay, load me. And here we go. The next step is applying the camera tracker effect. Right click here and go to effects and then click on the foundry. This one. This is the plugin you need to you need to activate. These four buttons here are the four, the four main editors for this step. We need to get the tracking points first. So we click on Track Features. This begins the tracking process, which might take a while depending on the video length. Okay? Up here, you can see how many frames have been tracked so far. It has to track each frame and then retrack them all backwards. Uh, if the video file gives problems or is lacking tracking data after this process, we can increase the amount of tracking points here in number of features. Okay, this of course makes the rendering process even longer. Here, here, number of features. It's set to 150. Right, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed up the video so we can skip the rendering process because it takes a long while. All right, done. We're done. Uh, as I said, the video file is rendering backwards now. Once this is done, we need to pick one of these points, one of these uh, orange points you see, as reference points. Uh, it's going to finish now. Great, it is done now. Uh, as you can see, I can move, move with. I can now move within the video file. We need to pinpoint the center of the scene, the reference point from which we will be we will be calculating the relative position of everything else. Think about where in this scene you want uh, 3D objects to appear later on, later on as well. That's uh, that's important. Right now we click on solve camera. This window here shows that we have 1.17 pixels of red projection network. This is a good result and uh, it can never go over 1.8. This this could end up affecting the final result. Okay, that uh, what we have now uh, 1.17. That's uh, that's good enough. We can work with that. Uh, okay, click on OK, and we see we're going to see. Wait a minute. Okay, we see that uh, almost every point is green now. We can remove red points here in Define and uh, Delete and Solve. I'm going to show you how to do that. Define, Delete and Solve. There we go. Now that they're gone now. We click uh, we click on solve camera again and as you know, well as you can see, you're about to see, you're gonna have less error, right? Now it's 1.16. That's uh, that's even better than what we had. Okay, now to the main process. This is done by clicking on create scene. If you look down here, you can see both the camera and the null object. This red square here, right? This uh, this one. Uh, that's the null object. If I go forward, we see that it's not uh, it's not very well positioned within the scene. What we want is to locate it in the center of the scene, in a point that appears all the way through the through the video, so it doesn't pop out of the of the frame or anything like that. This is done via this fourth editor here, Toggle 3D. This shows us the 3D space as seen here. We can see that the 3D floor doesn't match the real floor of the scene, so we need to recalibrate it. Uh, okay, uh, the first thing we need to do is to select a reference point. I'm going to select this one as it's the most centered, this one here as it's the most central reference point in the whole scene and therefore will appear in pretty much every frame. We go to Camera Tracker menu 
and click on ground plane set origin. We see that the null object is now located here. Hmm? You see? Let's move the frames around. The tracking seems to be working much better now. That's great. I can also select other points. For this, if I select this point, okay, wait a minute. If I select this point and then hold shift, uh, so I can select this, select this other one here. Uh, I can then go back to the menu and select set. The new object relo relocates to reflect this change. I can do the same with this or the, the another points or whatever point I want. All I have to do is hold shift and select Y. There. Uh, allow me to show you around. That's it. I can do it with this one or this one. Select set Y. Okay. Okay, good. This this was this will do for now. Now if we go to toggle 3D, uh, we will see that the planes are much better adjusted now. Right? See that's uh, that's uh, much better than what we had before. Take note that this green stick here is the Y axis. Hmm? Uh, which needs to be facing upwards, always upwards. It's also important that the horizon matches the real horizon. In this case, the horizon seems to, it seems a little crooked, right? So we we need to fix that. The best thing we can do is to manually adjust the images ourselves so that both horizons match, the real and the virtual one. This can be done by placing a physical mark over the over the screen to help us calculate. For instance, right now, uh, I'm putting my finger over over this part, uh, over this part of the scene, uh, see the real room, so so I can then toggle 3D and uh, make the perspective match. We can move the 3D world by tinkering here. Object no, transform and X, Y and Z rotation. Tinker around with these values until you manage to match both horizons. This is a manual process that requires well, it requires a lot of trial and error. Okay, take a look. Uh, take a look. Take a look at how I'm doing it. Right. You just uh, tinker around it. As you, as I said, the placing a many an actual object in front of the screen is a very good thing to do. Piece of paper, your your own finger, whatever you want. Now let's go to toggle 3D again. We will see we'll see that everything matches much better now. Okay. As you can see, the new object looks much better integrated within the real scene. Mm -hmm. The better we make the match, the less we will need to recalibrate it once we're within Infinity Set. Okay, now uh, once we're done here, we can export the video file so it can be readable by Brainstorm's Infinity Set. We'll save this bracket here in my uh, D hard drive, just like that. Allow me, just a second, please. Okay. Let's see where I can drop it. Uh, in my local disk uh, D. That's a good enough video. Got a good enough place here in video. I'm gonna rename it. Uh, this Duario, that's, uh, that's Spanish for locker room, by the way. Save. All right. Great. Done. Now uh, let's see how our how our After Effects plugin works by itself. We go here to uh, scripts and then to brainstorm after effects exporter this is the program uh, gen that's generating an infinity set compatible tracked video file we need we see that the file is saved next to the after effects file right uh, our next step uh, is open an infinity set we're done with after effects so I'm, I have minimized the, win the window this is Infinity Set uh, opening up. Uh, 
hello hello is just a second to load great now we are in an infinity set this is our base 3d space and what we're gonna do is we'll be inserting our track video file here we need to go to the cross point section and select the mode to be track AR and now it's set to track AR uh, after that we go to playlists and we select our video file to play here via tra simple drag and drop okay if we click on play yeah, as you can see the 3d space more or less matches the real space uh, however, it, it is still too bumpy to hold an actual 3D object uh, to make it look real. It is still unacceptable as it will make a 3D object bounce around the floor. We, we don't want that. We, we need to correct that. Uh, the first thing we need to do when we bring a track video file to Infinity Set is to click on this Media In icon and then go to da Data Offset. We will set it to minus 1. The... Okay, wait it to minus yeah minus one with minus one the bouncing continues let's make it minus three as you can see minus three is much better all it matches almost perfectly uh, now we need to adjust the size of our scene because if you look closely you can see that these bars here represent uh, a meter of height each this each bar of these is a meter high and well they are clearly off size they need to be larger we go to cross points and then to MISC here in tracking offsets. Uh, we see some value editors that allow us to do the necessary adjustments for the scene. Okay. All right. First, we need we change the scale so a meter in 3D world matches a meter in the real world. This uh, this will. I think that will be it, more or less. Uh, okay, yeah, we see that two meters is so we'll, that will be slightly over the drawing, the, the real drawing board. That seems close enough. Let's leave it at that. Okay, let's click. Uh, let's click on play now. See how it moves. Wait. Okay, uh, it looks okay but I, I think we could improve it even more as you can see this uh, this line here right, this one uh, it's not that's not 100% vertical we change this by going here again and change the parameters just like this take a look uh, Uh, if you check the lines of the wall in this room, you can use them as guidelines. So we make the 3D line be parallel to the wall line and the wall line. Okay. I think that's I think that's good enough. I'm going to click on play and see how it goes. Okay. No, I think that's good enough for what we want. Let's let's just leave it at that. It, that depends on you, but uh, for me, that's uh, that's close enough. Uh, now we're going to insert a 3D object here and see how it behaves. Let's go here, set the video to this frame. Then in cross points, we set a visible actor number one. Here in inputs, we set it to image. We apply this internal chroma gear and we crop the image. That, that's the usual the usual uh, method for infinity set. Right. Uh, however, if I click play now, we see, right, we see that the presenter is still, well, he's floating in the air. To, to correct this, we go to the actor tab and lower her by tinkering with the set parameter. Alright, uh, this one. Uh, right. Good, uh, but she's still too small. Okay, let's uh, let's scale her up with this. We can also move her around 
repositioner as, uh, as we see fit. Okay, of course, this will be a real actor in a real environment. This is just for show. Uh, let's click on play. See if we did it well. Yeah, it looks, looks great. It looks very much better now. Perfectly integrated within the scene. Maybe the size is close enough. As, as I said, it's just a template. The, uh, let's just put it this way better now. Depends on you, but uh, as you can see, there you have a lot of editors to per uh, make it so it perfectly matches. Let's drag and drop this uh, through the object here as well. And here we see that the object is in front of her because this is a full 3D environment. She's, she's not an overlaid sticker. She's an actual 3D object within the scene. All right. And uh, I believe that's, uh, that's all. We finished our After Effects Importer tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.